In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to build a 3D diagram of height restrictions and setbacks in SketchUp, right on top of a site survey, so you can confidently design within the rules. Along the way, we're going to upgrade SketchUp's stock aerial imagery, import and scale and improvement survey, and decipher and distill Denver's mind-numbing zoning code into a clear-cut visual diagram. Like, subscribe, let's get to it. To kick off any project, my first step is always geolocating the model. I usually incorporate the entire plot, capturing nearby intersections for added context. This introduces scaled aerial imagery, along with the terrain. The model is now anchored to actual latitude and longitude coordinates, allowing for real shadows. However, there's one problem. The aerial imagery resolution is shit poor quality, and that's why I use Placemaker to enhance it. From what I've seen, NearMap tends to offer superior quality. It might cost a few credits, which equates to a couple bucks, but the difference is night and day. Operating with high definition imagery is a world apart from navigating the pixelated haze of the standard import. Give Placemaker a try. Ever seen one of these guys? It's an improvement survey that I have to have in order to push my garage project through the city hoops. Can't make a move without it. But here's a twist. I use the digital drawings from this survey to shape up my site model in SketchUp and eventually my site plans in layout. But first things first, I need this drawing in SketchUp as clean vector line, not some fuzzy roster image. I'll hit that file dropdown and check import. See how PDF files are supported? That's thanks to a slick little extension I've added, John Brock's PDF importer. Now here's a cherry on top with this extension. I can crop the PDF before importing into SketchUp, leaving out all that extra title block and text stuff I don't need. There's a little hiccup though. PDF importer doesn't allow me to scale the input. I sure wish it did. Feature request? But don't sweat it. Watch this. Select the survey and tap enter. That's the quickest route into a grouper component. Time to scale. Activate the tape measure tool. Pick a dimension you know, like this guy right here. Click on the first point and then the second point. See the length in the measurements dialog? Just type in what it's supposed to be, then hit enter. We're just tweaking the active grouper component. In this case, the imported survey. We don't want to mess with the main model where the scaled site imagery and terrain lives. Hit yes and boom, all scaled up. Now let's double check our work. See this? It's reading 21 feet now. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Now, let's align this survey with the aerial shots. I can tell you for this task, I'm thrilled that we bumped up the resolution with Placemaker. Get it close, but it doesn't have to be perfect all the way around. Next on the agenda, sketching out our lot. Let's trace those survey lot lines using the rectangle tool, plugging in the exact measurements. Inside our plot, we're gonna be laser precise. Everything else? Just setting the scene with loose context. Let's paint it a light green, so we know that's our precise lot. Group it up, we're golden. So now we're diving into a crucial, but let's be real, not so thrilling part of the design game. If you're building in a city, chances are you'll have to hunt down a zoning sheet. This little fella lays down the rules for building a standalone garage in Denver. Our project is nestled in a UTUB zone district. We can go up one story, but we gotta cap it off at 17 feet. There's this thing called the bulk plane, an invisible series of planes that you must build within. It shoots up 10 feet from the side lot line, slants inward at 45 degree tilt, and peaks at our 17 foot maximum height. Our garage is gonna be situated in the back 35% of the lot. And with that, we score zero setbacks on the sides. Since the garage door is gonna face the alleyway, we'll need a five foot setback from the rear lot line. Finally, the garage's footprint can't exceed 864 square feet. And we gotta keep it under 36 feet long. Ugh, so many words. Let's model this in SketchUp so we can see the rules. First up, We'll map out the back 35% of the lot. Select the whole rectangle, ditch the side edges and center surface, group them, scale them down to 0.35, explode, and bam. You gotta know SketchUp's quirky little secrets to model fast. I can teach you. My SketchUp Pro Designer Basics course is now included with a Conduct Tools subscription. You'll learn everything you need to know to leverage SketchUp Pro and layout as a professional designer. Plus, you get the tools automated. Moving on, I'll drop a guide five feet from the rear lot line and toss in another guide for our 36 foot max length. Now for the bulk plane footprint. I'll sketch the base, raise it up by 10 feet for the side height, then another seven feet up to our 17 foot maximum height. For the 45 degree tilt, I'm busting out the fan favorite protractor tool. Add a guide, sketch a line to split the surfaces, then push pull to carve out the shape. I'll paint it red, triple click to select all, and then make it a group and there's our bulk point. Using SketchUp, you can visually represent the rules of the game and then confidently design within those constraints, which is exactly what we're going to do in the Garage Permit Set Livestream event. I'll show you every trick I know while modeling a real garage with the Medik tool, and then send a permit set to layout with my Conduct Tools extension. Or check out our latest upload here. I'm sure it's a gem. And if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below before you leave. I'll see you next time.